Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Standard geology tells us that the Earth and the life that inhabits it has changed incrementally over eons of time for many millions of years. The processes thought to have shaped our planet's landscape are wind and water erosion, volcanism, earthquakes, and random bombardments from space. Of course, a guide that scientists use to determine when a life form existed and how it evolved is the fossil record. Conventional theory tells us that the process of fossilization takes no fewer than 10,000 years. But countless archaeological findings suggest a, quote, radical alternative, that the remains of some animals and other organisms were fossilized not over eons of time, but instantaneously. In part one of this two-part presentation, Australian archaeologist Peter Mungo Jupp will present his case for the instant petrification of organisms on Earth by powerful electrical discharges. Electric fossilization. Now, living plants and animals are petrified into solid rock in a violent paroxysm of nature. Their ends were agonizing and instantaneous as witnessed by their contorted forms. Now, let's Let's look at some examples. Now, you go to Lesbos, and there's huge trees turned to solid stone while they still point to the heavens. Giant squid-like shell laminites glare up at us through translucent limestone rock where they lie entombed on a beach along the Jurassic coast in England, another example. And then you go to Hot Springs, South Dakota, there's gigantic mammoths converted to limestone and a huge bolus of flora and fauna. And perhaps the strangest of all, petrified crabs centered in spherical basalt boulders, Washington State. Now, what do these petrified fossils have in common? Their end was dramatic and instantaneous. But the unanswered question what pungent force of nature changed their chemical composition in their death throat? Now, conventional geology touts time as a slowly moving tool that leached their bodies and replaced the carbon with silicon and calcium. But the rapid decay of biological matter makes a nonsense of this theory. What then's the answer? Let's go outside the scientific square to start with. Let's track back to those who observe something deeply dramatic that may hold the key to this fossil forming event. Native American mythology has been held up as a witness to catastrophic mass destruction in modern times by the foundational paleontologist Georges Cuvier, writing some 200 years ago. He recorded much of their mythology around the destruction of the megafauna and used it as evidence of the many mass extinctions that have occurred on Earth. Importantly, American writer Adrian Meyer recognized the similarity in this destructive mythological war of the thunder gods against the sea monsters. She advocates for the use of the celestial thunderbolt as the weapon of choice in this megathornal destruction. Now, I'm going to read a, an example from the Lakota Nation, and as cited by Erdos and Ott, so just bear with me as I read it. This is a quote from their mythology. The Creator sang the song of destruction and sent down fierce thunderbirds to wage a great battle against the other humans and giant animals. Finally, at the height of the battle, the thunderbirds suddenly threw down their most powerful thunderbolts all at once. The fiery blast shook the entire world, toppling mountain ranges and setting forests and prairies ablaze. The flames let up in the sky in all directions. The world's lakes boiled and the giant animals and evil people burned up where they stood. The earth split open, sending great torrents across the entire world. The survivors found the bleached bones of the giant animals buried in mud, and rock all over the world. Now, backing up this, you've got Hesiod in the ancient Greek 
writing about the Gorgons, and they are specifically responsible for petrification. Okay, now, so where do we go from here? If we're to believe these bizarre tales, we recognise in many myths as the cosmic thunderbolt, backed up by plasma physicist Anthony Pratt, who's an advocate of giant plasma discharges that shape history, and as is Ren van der Slay in his study of mythology. Uh, for instance, in his Thunderbolts of Zaius, hitting down upon the earth and changing it. But can these thunderbolts or plasma discharges produce petrification, turning living tissues to rock? Now, I just want to pause a second. We've got to notice the difference between fossilization and petrification. Fossilization is the preservation of tissue. Such occurs in fossils burned, buried in coal, like in Antarctica, Alaska, and Siberia, oil, such as the La Brea tar pits outside Los Angeles, peat, for instance, uh, mammoths buried in Snowmass, Colorado, whereas petrification is a subset where the original carbon-rich material is either replaced or transmuted to different compounds such as silicon or calcium, in other words, rock. Now, although fossilization generally is undoubtedly the result of cataclysmic events, the burial of fauna and thaw in Alaska muck, petrification would seem to magnify the catastrophic event to actually transmute elements and compounds. I suspect this is the result of powerful electromagnetic forces that happen to centralize in a chosen area, not necessarily continent-wide, as the catastrophes themselves. But I'm going to go to, into detail this in another episode. But what evidence do we have that electrical phenomena can cause elements to transmute to another form, e.g. water to calcium? What tool of nature fossilized these once watery marine ammonites? We have a powerful clue. Now, this is a formational study done by Eric Milton he described the examination of a petrified tree trunk, essentially water and carbon, in Alberta, Canada. And I'll quote him. The piece, this is the wood, was pure silica inside. It was coated with a rougher, opaque crust of partially fused sand. The tree whose stump was petrified was alive five years ago. After the tree was cut down to accommodate the right of way for a new power transmission line, an accidental break allowed the five high voltage wire contact several tree stumps still in the ground. Power was cut off within hours of the break. All of the tree roots which contacted the broken wires were fossilized. Obviously, extremes of electricity can metamorphosize matter quickly. As much as we stretch our credibility to explain fossilization and petrification of watery living animals, there is a bigger question. What about the medium these very animals are preserved in? Let's examine a couple of these cases. Now, I went to Hot Springs uh, in South Dakota, talked to uh, Dr. Larry Agenborough, and he explained to me the mammoths themselves are barely distinguishable from the medium they're immersed in i.e. all calcium carbonate. And there's this huge bolus, which is amazing to see, not just mammoths, but short-faced bear, camels, all sorts of things, in this huge bolus about 100 feet across and about 90 feet deep. This is a huge bolus, and it's all calcium. And fascinatingly, although Larry himself believes the mammoths fell into the water and gradually were uh, petrified, in actual fact, when you examine the diggings, there's thousands of little um, subsets going right through the area. Like the, these are layers, and you wonder what caused these layers. Is this perhaps an electrical effect? And I suspect it probably is. So that's one. Was the water there possibly turned to uh, calcium carbonate? You know, I cite the example of H2O, which... Uh, is um, two protons of hydrogen and eight protons of oxygen making 10 in all, whereas calcium carbonate is 50 or five times that number. Could 
some agency changes. It's all you need is additional neutrons. And as we know from Russian studies, whenever there's a major lightning strike, neutrons are in abundance everywhere for some strange reason. We don't know why. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.